What is up ladies and gentlemen, this is Jeff Benjamin with iDownload Blog. The latest version of Final Cut Pro is finally here. Uh, this is the newest version of Final Cut Pro. It is version 10.2. And you can see that it sports a brand new logo and a brand new splash screen upon startup. So that is my first favorite feature. I know it's a little on the superficial side, but I thought the old logo was kind of boring and just a little long in the tooth. This new logo looks really good. Here it is. This is the new Final Cut Pro 10 logo for Final Cut Pro 10.2. And it looks really good. Uh, so that is my first favorite feature of the new Final Cut Pro 10.2 update. My next favorite new feature is the new unified import interface, which is really, really awesome. For those of you who have imported files into Final Cut Pro, you know how cumbersome it was. This is the new unified interface, and you can see you can do everything on one page. So you don't have to select your media, then choose import, then choose how you want to import that media. You can do all this in one fell swoop. So you can uh, do all your file stuff, your transcoding stuff, if you want to uh, create proxy media or optimize media uh, upon import, you can do that. You can set up keywords and all that, uh, balance for color, or analyze for balance color, uh, do your audio stuff. Um, and also manage all of your, your existing events. Say you want to put these, this media into an existing event, or if you want to create a new event for the media, and you could choose a library for that event and uh, give it a, an event name, all from one screen, which is really awesome. Uh, so no longer do you have to juggle between two different screens to manage what you want to import. So I thought that was definitely an upgrade. So for anyone who has done importing with Final Cut Pro 10 in the past, you're going to love this. And this is why it makes my top five list. Now, my next favorite feature is smart collections. Now you can have smart collections at both the event and library level, which is really awesome. So, you know, if you have a library with a whole bunch of projects in it, sometimes it may be hard for you to find uh, the project you're looking for in particular. You may have to sort on import date or a creation date or things like that. Uh, it just makes it a little difficult, especially if you have a lot of stuff in a particular library, a lot of projects, a lot of uh, media to accompany those projects. Well, now you can have a smart collection within the library at the library level, which is really nice. So I could create a smart collection that says latest projects. So it'll only show the projects in this particular library for the last day. So if I worked on a project, two projects here, you could see uh, they will pull those in. I can quickly find those easily. And you can of course set up, I mean, the sky's the limit here. You can set up all sorts of different um, criteria to search on. I just created one like this, um, but you can see you can create smart collections at both the event and library level, which is something very nice to have. Now, my next favorite feature is probably the headlining feature of the update, and that is 3D text support. So if you click your text panel here, you'll see uh, the various 3D text. You have 3D and you have 3D cinematic. Uh, but 3D text, if you just drag it into your timeline like this, you can edit all sorts of parameters uh, for this 3D text, and it's really impressive. Um, you don't need to open up motion or do anything else with any kind of third-party plugins or anything. You can do all this directly within Final Cut Pro. Uh, which is impressive. So I'm going to open up the inspector for this particular 3D text item. And you'll see under the text section, you'll see 3D text. And there's where you can edit all the 3D text parameters. So you can uh, change the depth like that. Change the weight like that. Uh, you can change the front edge. So you can choose all these different edges, bevel ring, square ring, double round. That's kind of neat. Um, and there's just a lot of different things you can change and adjust. If you hit the disclosure triangle, you can go even deeper on a lot of these different settings here. You even have lighting that you can adjust, uh, which is really awesome. And, um, you have lighting, you have material. So you have all sorts of different materials, uh, located in this panel. So you can choose if you want grunge, grunge brushed or grunge dark, you can change to that right there on the fly and that will update. Uh, there's even like a plastic, looks like the iPhone 5C, doesn't it? All right, I wanna choose the green plastic here. And uh, if you go down, you can adjust the substance. So you see plastic, you can adjust that right there. But you can also switch up the colors using RGB values like that. 
You can change the type. If you want it to be a matte color, you can do that. Or if you want it to be a shiny color, you can keep it shiny. Or you can even make it textured if you want to, which is really neat. And you can adjust the intensity of the texture or the depth. So you can see, and you can't really see the textures right now, but as you drag here, computer's running a little slow. As you drag here, you'll see the, uh, the texture depth adjust a little bit. And if I make the size of that text a little more large, you'll be able to see that texture a little bit more pronounced. So just give me a second, I'll drag that up. And you can see the texture a little bit more pronounced there. So just really impressive overall with the uh, 3D text. So that is my, uh, my next favorite feature, the headlining feature, no doubt, of Final Cut Pro 10, and I just went very, very light. Uh, it's much more in depth than that. You can do all sorts of really cool things with 3D text. Uh, there's 3D cinematic text. Um, of course, you can animate that text, etc. Now, my favorite feature in the 10.2 update is the ability to save custom presets and recall them on the fly at any time in any project. So, say for instance, there's a special uh, way that I go about editing audio or I go about adding effects to audio. Say I turn the volume down to negative five decibels and say I added a compressor effect and I customized the compressor settings directly to my liking and then I replicated this in every single piece of audio in every project that I ever did over and over. Uh, that would get kind of tedious if I, well, it is kind of tedious when I have to do that uh, because I'm just repeating the same steps pretty much over and over and over uh, because they work for me. Uh, so wouldn't it be nice if you could save that preset or save that effect combination as a preset so that you can easily recall that in any project? Well, now you can. If you look in the effects panel at the very bottom right hand corner, you'll see this save effects preset. So all you do is you just highlight the element or highlight the clip in the timeline that has the preset combination or the effect combination that you want to save and then just click save effects preset and then you'll get a name and then you can choose what attributes you want to save uh, as an effects preset so I'm just going to call this my uh, Jeff's test preset and then I'll keep all the attributes there voiceover enhancement volume uh, effects uh, etc and then I'll just click on save so now all I have to do is highlight the clip that I want to apply the effect to and then just find my effect that I created. So I'm just gonna put in Jeff, and there it is, Jeff's test preset. And I can even right click on this, reveal in Finder, and then save that off to you know some, some other location or import it in another location and share this if I want to, if there's an effect preset that I like, or just save it off so that I have it in the future, um, I can do that which is really cool. So those have been the five new features that I really, really appreciate in the latest version of Final Cut Pro. It is Final Cut Pro 10, 10.2. Folks, let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with iDownloadBlog.